we began in a fairy tale and we came to life. But is this life reality? No. It is a film. Zumba camera. I've always been interested in the technical side of filmmaking, from hunting down behind the scenes videos to researching the various formats that have existed since its beginnings. Learning about this stuff can help contextualize the time period a movie was made in, or say something about the intent of the creative people involved. The transition from analog to digital cinema was the biggest revolution in the history of the medium. It completely changed the way movies are produced, exhibited, and delivered. David Fincher is a director whose name has grown to be almost synonymous with digital cinema. He helped define its look and has completely embraced the power of CGI. But unlike your James Cameron or George Lucas, Fincher seems more interested in subtly enhancing the reality of his films with these technologies, rather than wowing audiences with impressive but obvious effects. What a better way to begin our discussion than by talking about Fincher's films that were not actually shot digitally. While this may seem counterintuitive, I would argue that these early movies helped define what we think of as the digital look today. We'll begin with Seven, because the less said about Alien 3, the better. Even though Seven was shot on Super 35mm film, it has a surprisingly clean and modern presentation. The primary film stock used for indoor scenes was Kodak 5293, described by the manufacturer as having microfine grain and very high sharpness. Cinematographer Darius Kanji created a film developing process that could create rich blacks while simultaneously desaturating colors. Both the sharpness and high contrast of its image give Seven a look closer to modern digital cinema than other 35mm films of yesteryear. Take a look at this scene from Silence of the Lambs for comparison. Both movies are thrillers, both involve hunting down a serial killer, both were released within five years of each other, but their visual presentations are distinctly different. Fincher has established a unique cinematographic style, one that presents what's captured in stark clarity. It is present in his later 35mm films like Fight Club and will carry on into the digital age with the next film I'd like to discuss. 2007 Zodiac is Fincher's first movie shot with digital cameras. In fact, it's one of the first movies ever shot entirely digitally. And it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Throughout production, the Viper Filmstream HD cameras used were recording uncompressed and directly to hard drive. Compared to his 35mm films, even more of the image is revealed in razor sharpness and is free to be manipulated. Black levels can be pushed even deeper and noise is altogether absent, except for some artifacting in really dark scenes. The smaller size of the cameras allows for more handheld shots, and the number of takes is no longer constrained by the cost of celluloid. Coupled with a narrative commitment to historical accuracy, the digital look of Zodiac adds to its carefully constructed reality. Fincher himself claimed that at times it visually feels like a news report, not a Hollywood movie. Zodiac's late 60s, early 70s setting was painstakingly recreated with digital mats and models, but looking at it, you wouldn't be able to tell. The city's period accurate skyline appears in white establishing shots with the now collapsed portions of the Nimitz freeway still intact. One of the key locations in the film, the corner of Washington and Cherry, was largely created through blue screen compositing and addition of CG props. In essence, the reality of the film's world is not what is physically captured by the camera, but what is carefully crafted from the many elements in production and post-production. In a way, Zodiac both contradicts and exemplifies Andre Bazin's idea of a total cinema. Through digital manipulation, a new technological affordance, the filmmakers were able to create a perfect illusion of the outside world in sound, color, and relief. But the world the audience sees is one that no longer exists, or never really existed in the first place. Regardless, Fincher would increasingly use CGI and other digital technologies to finally control every element of his films. 2008's The Curious Case of Benjamin Button included the first, arguably, photorealistic CG human. The titular character's variously aged models made use of bump mapping, high-res texturing, and subsurface scattering. His performance was built from detailed hand animation and an extensive set of Brad Pitt motion capture data. While Benjamin Button is an impressive technical fee, the digital character seems to go against Fincher's typical MO. Usually, a Fincher effect must go beyond being simply convincing. The intent is to go completely unnoticed by the audience, to create a more convincing world through the accumulation of altered details. 
Benjamin Button's transition is largely seamless, but it nevertheless betrays some of its own reality by remaining the focal point of audience attention. Fincher would again make use of digital head replacement in the social network to allow Army Hammer to convincingly portray both Winklevoss twins, and this time the effect is far from the center of the story. Perhaps calling it a head replacement is too extreme. It's more of a face replacement. The team at Lola VFX animated a face mask from reference footage of Hammer performing under lighting conditions that matched the footage recorded on set. Josh Pence, who played one of the Winklevi when they were on screen together, provided head tracking data that the digital face could then be mapped to. The final effect is subtle enough to not disturb our perceptions of authenticity. It's plausible that someone could watch the entire movie thinking that they hired twins. Focusing so much work on post-production, including the creation of performances, perhaps loses some of the spontaneity possible in photography, but it allows delivery of an exact perception of reality, the perception intended by the filmmaker. David Fincher is a director that values control in the production of his works, so it's fitting that he is such a big proponent of digital cinema. Digital cameras and grading have allowed him to refine the visualist style he achieved with chemical processes on his 35mm films. Even these early films made smaller use of CGI for shot extensions and some impossible camera moves. However, Zodiac marked the true transition into digital filmmaking, utilizing HD cameras and extensive digital effects. Films since have introduced exciting new technologies that have allowed finer control over performance and visuals, but at the end of the day, it's important to remember that this is all in the service of communicating great stories. The effort put into every aspect of production just makes them all the more captivating.